What's up, everybody? Derek Anderson, the DA. All right, check it out. So Bob Iger right now still on his victory lap, you know, after defeating Nelson Peltz and Tryan partners over there at the uh, board of directors vote over at Disney. You know, he didn't lose a single person, man. He did not lose one member of his, you know, yes men coalition. All right. None of his uh, minions, none of his sycophants, they are all still there and they're all in place. It's people that are going to push back against Bob Iger, them people don't exist, all right? Everybody that's on that board is a Bob Iger yes man, and they're going to do everything that Bob Iger says, all right? They are his lap dogs, all right? So you can forget about anything changing over there as long as this guy is still running the company, you know? And now because he's won, he gets to come out there and talk all kinds of shit. As you can see on this uh, headline, Vanity Fair, uh, Bob Iger thinks woke Disney critics don't even know what woke means. Y'all see that? Yeah, y'all don't even know what the word woke means. Y'all out here using words y'all don't even understand. You know, like that's what Bob is basically saying to everybody that criticizes him. All right. Which, again, this is what happens when you win. You know, when you win, what do they say? The uh, winners write the history books. You get to tell everybody what's what. Yeah, yeah. Y'all don't know what's up. I know what's up. I'm Bob Iger. I won. You know, and so he gets to get out here and talk all of the shit he wants to. And everybody's just got to sit up here and eat it because they couldn't get one dummy. OK, one cat. They couldn't get anybody on the board. All right. Bob Iger paid his way through it. I get it. You know, but the fact is, is that all of the cats that voted for this and it's mostly these institutions. OK, not the individuals. It's these large institutions that kept Bob Iger in power, you know, because they believe in Bob Iger and they believe in the shit that Bob Iger pushes, you know, but we don't. All right. And when Bob Iger's telling us we don't know what woke means yet, we know Bob Iger is just gaslighting the hell out of everybody else. Yeah, here go another gem from thatparkplace.com. Shout out to of John F. Trent, of course. Uh, Disney CEO Bob Iger believes he's removed Disney from the culture war and claims company is not infusing messaging in its films and TV shows. Yo, we're not woke. First of all, y'all don't know what woke means. And secondly, we're not even woke. OK, we're not pushing any kind of message whatsoever. I don't know what you guys are talking about. That's what Bob's saying. All right. That's what Bob is trying to say. And this company does not get down with the messages. All right. It says in here in the article, he says, uh, look, the term woke is thrown around liberally. No pun intended in that regard. I think a lot of people don't really understand what it means. The bottom line is that infusing messaging as a sort of a number one priority in our films and TV shows is not what we're up to. They need to be entertaining. Yeah, I call bullshit. OK, I call bullshit on that all day long. All right. Just looking at what Disney has put out there tells you that they're woke, tells you that they are trying to infuse messaging as the number one priority in their television, in their films. That's it. That's it. That's all. OK. And look, for the definition, OK, people that say, oh, I don't understand. People don't understand what it means in, in regards to Hollywood. And I've said this several times. All right. In regards to Hollywood, woke is basically just sanctimony. All right. It's a sanctimonious belief. All right. It's virtue signaling. All right. It's trying to hit that ESG score. That's basically what wokeness is, all right? Sanctimony, self-righteous bullshit. You don't really care about the stuff that you're doing. Box checking, okay? Oh, we got to have so many certain minorities. We got to check off all the boxes, okay? You guys remember that one little chart? Yeah, you guys remember this, right? Uh, the Disney General Entertainment Content Inclusion Standards. You guys remember this crap? All right. Where uh, characters, 50 percent or more of the regular or recurring characters uh, must come from underrepresented groups. All right. You got to hit at least what does it say? Three out of the five areas need to be met to fulfill standard A. Three out of six areas for standard B. Two out of five for standard C. Three out of six for standard B. All right. And they all got what? Diversity, equity and inclusion wrapped all around it. You know, it's not about entertainment, Bob. I'm sorry. It's not entertainment. What, what does this got to do with entertainment? The fact that uh, a certain amount of people come from underrepresented groups, you know, 50 uh, percent or more of your producer uh, and writing staff are coming from underrepresented groups. 50 percent of episodic directors come from underrepresented groups. What does this have to do with entertainment? What does any of this have to do with entertainment? Nothing. Again, that's how, you know, Bob Iger is full of shit. Again, this is your uh, uh, inclusion standards there, Bob. All right. I ain't make this shit up. This is Disney stuff. This runs through the whole company. You can find this same standard across the board. All right. With Disney, with ABC, ESPN, so on and so forth. All right. That's what it is. So, yeah, lose it. And then they try to, oh, well, you know, we got context is critical. I like this little part down here at the bottom. 
Uh, context is critical um, when evaluating if a group is underrepresented. Uh, anyone involved in hiring decisions is prohibited from asking candidates and talents about their actual or perceived race, religion, color, sex, orientation, uh, gender, gender identity, so on and so forth. You can't ask them questions about it. All right. You just got to eyeball them and like, all right, man, you look black. All right, come on in. You know, like that's basically how they're getting down. And this is what it leads to. Right. Uh, Star Wars, the acolyte will reflect the showrunner's own queer identity. Can somebody please help me out there in the audience? What does the showrunner's own queer identity got to do with entertainment? What is entertaining about the showrunner's queer identity? I, I don't understand it. Can somebody please help me out? All right. Leslie Headland plans to have her real world experience as a lesbian shine through in the show's creation. This show's creation started with her real world experience as a lesbian. What is again? What does this have to do with entertainment? Can somebody please help me out? I'm confused, Bob. Can you please explain to me how this show was created with all of this stuff in mind? Oh, but, you know, we're all about the entertainment. Yeah, please help me understand that one. All right. And somebody help me understand this one, too. You know, when Mark Ruffalo said Kevin Feige was ready to leave Marvel if Disney refused MCU diversity. Uh, Kevin wanted black superheroes, women superheroes, LGBTQ superheroes. He changed the whole Marvel universe. All right. Again, explain to me, what does any of this have to do with just pure entertainment? Just telling an entertaining story. Hey, we're not here for any messages. We're not here to infuse any messages, push any agendas. No, but uh, Kevin Feige was about to walk up out of there if they said, nah, we ain't with that diversity shit. You know, just tell good, interesting stories and we'll let the diversity take care of itself. Oh, well, I'm walking up out of here. If you guys aren't going to, you know, really push the agenda, that is clear. And look, understand. I don't mind any of this stuff if the story is good. If the story is trash, I don't care how many black superheroes or women superheroes or gay superheroes you want to put in it. If the story is trash, it's trash. I don't care if all the superheroes were white. If the story is trash, it's trash. If the entertainment value is not there, it's just not there. And all of this stuff is just a smokescreen at that point. You know, if you don't have an entertaining story and you're just using all of this diversity shit, which is basically what phase four and five of the MCU is. All right. The M she you. It's just nothing but a smoke screen to hide from the fact that you guys don't actually know what the fuck you're doing. And you're telling trash garbage stories and people are checked out in their board and they are checked out and bored because, oh, you guys put a whole bunch of black superheroes and women superheroes and gay superheroes. People are checked out and bored because you keep pushing the agenda above the entertainment. You guys remember this, right? A Fantastic Four, Kevin Feige reportedly feared cast was too white before Pedro Pascal. What does this got to do with entertainment, Kev? What does this have to do with entertainment, Bob Iger? Nothing. This is all about the agenda. This is all about the message. Oh, my God, it's too white. Oh, my God, we can't have that. We can't have a too white cast. Why not? All the characters are white. Why would you not have a white cast or oh, uh, uh, an all white uh, Fantastic Four? Why wouldn't you? Oh, my God. I think of how that'll look. I mean, it's just ridiculous, man. But again, Bob Iger will insist. Oh, no, 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 no. No agendas here. No infusing messaging. You know, we're not pushing anything. We're not woke. OK, this is strictly about the entertainment, all about the entertainment. Yeah. And then you get to Willow. Right. And even the fans of Willow understood what was going on with Willow. All right. The Disney's Willow bites the dust and fans are outraged. Remember, Willow got yanked off of Disney Plus because it wasn't getting any viewers. You know, and they say it's a crime against the LGBTQ plus community. Well, why is it a crime against the community? Well, they explain it right here. Uh, it left fans mourning the loss of much needed LGBTQ representation. That's basically what it is. Coming back to this whole thing right here. All right. They didn't have the representation. The underrepresented groups aren't being represented. And so they were outraged. Again, this is, again, Bob Iger, you may be living in some sort of a weird-ass bubble. I don't understand. But honestly, no, Bob Iger understands what's happening here. And when he was asked about how hard he's worked to make the company entertainment first, Iger answered, engaging with our executives, engaging with the creative community, returning to our roots, making sure that everybody is aligned with what our priorities are, and understanding that, look, we're trying to reach a very, very diverse audience. Well, what does he mean by that? You know, every time they push diversity, they're talking about diversity of skin colors. OK, not diversity of thought. Notice that never comes into play. It's not diversity of thought. It's diversity of skin color, diversity of different cultures and all that kind of stuff. 
It's not about, hey, I think this way, you think that way. You know, these are the diverse thoughts that come amongst regular people. It's always about skin color. It's always about gender. It's about sexual orientation. That's the diversity that Bob Iger is always looking at. Uh, and he continued. And on one hand, in order to do that, the stories you have you tell have to really reflect the audience you're trying to reach. But that audience, because they're so diverse, really, first and foremost, they want to be entertained. And sometimes they can be turned off by certain things. And we have to be more sensitive to the interest of the broad audience. It's not easy. You can't please everybody all the time. Yeah. See, the point should be just to entertain. That's it. That's all. But that's not what he's doing. You can see here he's doing all of this rigmarole. OK. It's like, oh, man, you know, uh, they could be turned off by certain things. We got to be sensitive to that. And that's what they're doing. They're being sensitive. All right. Sensitive instead of being entertaining. You know, hey, the audience is just going to like what they like. And if they don't like it, they out. You make the content, you make it as interesting as you can. And then just let the chips fall where they may. Some people will like it. Some people won't. You know, that's just the way it works. And I know, I understand that Disney has to be like super on top of this, you know, because they got all of these major franchises. But why is it that you've ran like very, very popular franchises into the ground, Bob? Why is it that Star Wars is at the bottom of the ocean right now, Bob? OK, it's because of the agenda, because you didn't put entertainment first. Kathleen Kennedy put her message first. She put her agenda first. I mean, the fact that the company was bought by the Walt Disney Company has been amazing because they very much support the fact that we are trying to grow uh, in the workforce, the number of women in executive positions and in all positions inside the company and with the movies that we're making and with the protagonists that we're putting in the stories. So I get a huge amount of support with that. But we have 50 percent of our, our executive team are women mm -hmm. and six out of eight of the people in my story group are women. And I'm sure there's a lot of people that would be surprised that we're making Star Wars movies and the majority of the people involved in the development of those stories are women. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's making a huge difference in the stories that we're trying to tell. And the same thing goes with Marvel, okay? Same thing with Marvel. Oh, shit, uh, Kevin Feige's about to run up out of there if they don't start pushing diversity down everybody's throat. So again, you know, Bob can say whatever it is he wants to say, but his two premier franchises have absolutely gone into the tank because all he wanted to do is just shove MCU, all right, and then Kathleen Kennedy's woke ass, all she wanted to do is just push girl boss, girl boss, girl boss, all right, Fuck good storytelling. We don't care about that. It's all about the message over there at Disney. And yet and still, Bob want to come out against his critics. Oh, my critics don't even know what the word woke means. OK, you know, he had all the gaslighting. Right. Uh, my company cares more about entertainment than making content with a message. Well, your audience disagrees, Bob. OK, you know, maybe you think this. All right. Maybe you disagree with the critics, but the critics are basically trying to explain, OK, this is why Disney sucks right now. All right. And I mean, you know, maybe you can't put a word to it. Like maybe Bob don't understand it. Maybe this clown uh, Chris Murphy don't understand it. But, you know, there's a reason why Indiana Jones failed. There's a reason why Star Wars movies are failing. There's a reason why all of this Disney content is failing on its face. Why Marvel is going over the side of a cliff. There's a reason for this stuff. And what have I said in the past? Hey, listen to your audience. Listen to your customers. Listen to your clients. The people that you're supposed to be working for. Okay. Like, again, if you open up a grocery store, you all right, we got groceries here. But then people come in and, and ain't no damn groceries. They see auto parts and tires and all kind of bullshit, windshield wipers and everything. They're like, wait a minute. I came in here for groceries. People are coming to Disney for entertainment. They're not getting it. And so they're walking out the door. All of your major franchises are falling flat on your face. Instead of trying to get out there on your high horse, why don't you actually sit back and go, hmm. Maybe these critics might have something or even if they don't know what woke means, according to my own definition, maybe I need to figure out what they think woke means and let me address that. OK, and say, hey, oh, you know, we're not making content with the message. Well, uh, maybe you are, Bob. Maybe your dumb ass can't see it, but everybody else is looking at it like that. So, hey, maybe Bob needs to wake up. OK, Bob needs to get woke to what woke really means in this current climate. All right. Words can shift up and change, you know, meanings. OK, and Bob has to understand the lay of the land. He's the CEO of an entertainment company and he doesn't seem to get it. The guy's a fucking idiot. I just don't understand how this man kept his uh, kept all of these board members. I don't understand how this guy was brought back as CEO. 
it's been a dumpster fire ever since. Anyway, you guys let me know what y'all think about this situation. I just find the whole thing hilarious. Again, Bob Iger sticking his foot in his mouth. Guy's a moron. He's an idiot. You know, might be a CEO, might get praise from all kinds of people. He gets none from me. All right. He has destroyed two big, huge franchises and more than that. All right. He's destroyed the Disney princesses. You know, he's destroyed Pixar. This guy is not the guy you think he is. He is not a genius, all right? And anyway, you guys let me know what you think. Jump down in the comments. Give me your thoughts and opinions on that. Thanks for watching. See you next time.